Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. You're watching Breaking Boundaries on Safir TV, Sky 847. I'm Bilal Ali Hugh. This week we will be exploring the prophetic dream Muslims in the modern society. I'm joined by Sayyid Abu Talib Zaidi. Assalamu alaikum. And also by Sister Hannah Smith. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Glad that you both could make it at you know, relatively short notice, and I'm really looking forward to today uh, jumping into. The meat of the conversation but um before we get to exploring the the, the vision i guess from a modern mm. context and how we can implement that vision um i'd like to just find out a bit about your i know you're a phd and if i can find out a little bit about or introduce yourself to the audience i could guess the viewing audience by letting us know the topic of your phd and a bit about your academic background um i have done my master's in urdu and persian and i did my phd as well uh, my PhD was on the literature of Islamic Revolution. It was it was covering the area from 1960 to 1985, mm -hmm. pre and post Islamic Revolution. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, I came to London. I was working with one of the bank here. Uh, almost, I worked for seven or eight years with them. And currently, I'm uh, basically working for my org organization, Darus Sadiq. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is basically my main aim is to uh, promote the ha hadith and teachings of Quran among youth okay. uh, through different resources uh, which which were is available here and uh, I, I promote them on basically uh, different medias like uh, Facebook, WhatsApp okay. Okay. and through different sources. And you're targeting young people so that might targeting be one of the best people. avenues is using yeah, social right. media. Excellent. And, mm. you, and yourself, uh, Hannah, I know you have uh, an academic background also. Yep. Um, so um, I started out in a subject called geophysics. Um, it's physics of the earth. Um, I have a degree and a master's in that field. Then I pursued education. I trained as a teacher, secondary teacher in physics, and I worked in a number of um, schools in London as a secondary teacher. And then um, I have worked in community development, like charities, um, I worked with reverts, uh, I've been working on a school model, and I worked in human rights about a year. And the last year and a half, I've been undertaking traditional, um, what you could call seminary studies on the Shia tradition, Hosa studies. Um, and I've been studying this past year and a half Arabic, um, fiqh, usul of fiqh, history, kalam, um, philosophy and logic, so very traditional um, Shiite Hosa curriculum. The, yeah. bed, the bedrock of the, yeah. of the clerical uh, studies. Um, so if we can, I guess, um, move a little bit towards the, the main topic. Um, there is, but some say, a been a, a deficit or a, a vacuum in the Muslim community, communities in Britain with respect to a number of areas of meeting the needs and the challenges um, that the modern, you know, the modern era of this society um, poses the Muslim community, communities. And there has emerged a, a think tank, there's been a conference, uh, things of this nature to discuss some of the needs and developing a vision and a way forward. Uh, I guess I'd like to ask why? Why a think tank or why a conference or why does this need to be, to be done? I think I'll start with, with, with yourself. Yeah, um, so I, I'm one of the co-founders of um, what we're calling our fledgling, we, what we think is the first ever uh, Muslim think tank in Britain, uh -huh. um, the Institute of Com Muslim Community Development. And the idea behind this concept um, is that, as you said, there is a vacuum um, in vision, in strategic... Um, leadership um, of ideas and of creating institutions and frameworks that are in in keeping with the Western um, frameworks that we exist in this society. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is fill in that gap and we have many organizations in the Muslim community, hundreds. And you think about all the organizations that are, for example, affiliated to MCB. Mm -hmm. We have hundreds of organizations working in the area of Muslim community development. Right, right. But they're working at a very local, grassroots level. And there's a lot of overlap between the work they're doing. Um, and there's no coordination between them, or very little. Mm -hmm. And there's no strategic development of how, as a huge number of organizations, they are contributing towards a British vision of Islam. And 
many people might think, well, why do we need a British vision of Islam? You know, isn't, isn't, isn't Islam enough? The revelation enough? Um, mm -hmm. Aren't our existing religious institutions enough? Um, well, actually, I believe they're not, um, because we are facing many challenges as a community. Um, if you think about our children, for example, very immediate, think of our own families. Um, yeah. We know that the generation um, that's growing up now, they're really struggling to understand how the Muslim, the Islamic faith, fits in a modern society. You know, what does it mean to be a Muslim? Why should you be a Muslim? Why should you believe in God? Mm -hmm. We live in an increasingly atheistic society and our children are really feeling the pressure. They're also minority faiths, so they're going to be challenged by all the other faiths. So yes, yes. I've worked in an Islamic school um, and I've worked in schools in London and where there are many Muslim children and I've seen the, the, you know, these issues with my own eyes and I've had many questions and the, the vision behind the think tank is to actually create high-level strategic policies to direct the Muslim community. So not replicating at a local level things that are already being done, whether okay. it's a food drive mm -hmm. or it's helping the homeless or it's organizing local majalis. This is not what it's about. It's about responding to the high-level needs. For example, at the level the government operate. I mean, the government at the moment is taking a very keen interest in the Muslim community, you could say. Very keen interest. Very keen interest, very if keen way you could yeah. phrase it. Mm -hmm. um, we have incoming legislation on schools, on madrasas or out of um, school educational environments. We have legislation on security. Uh, we have um, a huge amount of Islamophobia, um, fear of Muslims, which is being inculcated by the various terror attacks and this fear that Muslims are entryists taking over Britain um, and this is leading to what you could say anti-Muslim hatred. Mm -hmm. It's actually mm -hmm. a hatred Ign of Muslims. A whole lot of ignorance. These two terms are interchangeable, some argue, mm -hmm. and interrelated. Um, and Muslims, I feel the Muslim community doesn't have a direct response to these. Um, we are incredibly reactionary. So when we are attacked directly, um, we rise up if uh, something happens abroad um, which we feel threatens our identity we you know burn effigies and so on mm -hmm. but when it comes to yeah. I think the reaction to these challenges should be a proactive forward-thinking strategy we should have our own vision so that when these challenges come upon us we've already got a solution um, that is the way forward um, mm -hmm. as opposed to waiting for crises you know, the threshold to reach a, a threshold where we then have to react. Mm -hmm. We actually have already thought out, we have a policy, we have a committee, we have a body of people working in that area, and we don't have these kind of um, violent, not violent, but... Um, what, like knee-jerk? Knee-jerk, yeah, knee-jerk mm -hmm. responses and mm -hmm. inflammatory situations. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is the vision behind the think tank and it would work in those areas that government traditionally works mm -hmm. um, or other think tanks and we think what is a think tank is a body of individuals, mm -hmm. scholars, academics that mm -hmm. are do, uh, conducting research and designing solutions. Essentially, because sometimes people hear yeah. the word think tank and they, and then they get very conspiratorial yeah. or you know, they, uh, really? they think um, that sometimes think tanks are yeah. benevolent bodies. No, I mean, there are s the thing with think tanks is they're slightly different to universities, you could say, because mm -hmm. universities are conducting, I would say, often more neutral research. Um, but think tanks are often aligned with political parties, which yeah. is why you yeah. could say they Or a perspective, have, a philosophical yeah, they perspective. Yeah, they normally have an agenda. And we can think of um, examples to help the viewers understand. I mean, for example, you have the Fabian Society, which mm -hmm. is aligned with the Labour Party. You have Policy Exchange, which mm -hmm. is Michael Gove's think tank, mm -hmm. um, which has like a neocon um, agenda. You have the Henry Jackson Society, you have Chatham House, you have Russi. These have security um, outlooks. So think tanks have agendas and the Muslim community is taking hold of our agenda, our vision. Mm -hmm. How can we create a prophetic vision in the 21st century? Because mm -hmm. I do feel the re existing religious institutions and organizations, the, the work they are doing is out of sync with 21st century knowledge and society. Okay. And we need to bring them into um, 
together. So you, you said something that struck me as very profound, that it's a proactive, Yeah. Uh, it's dealing with uh, re a vision as opposed to just reacting, and that's quite yeah, important. I think absolutely. the saying is that if you started already, then you wouldn't have to get ready. So if an yeah. issue arises, you're not just yeah. knee-jerk responding, but you have a A case of having a vision of what do you want? What would the prophet be doing? Um, mm -hmm. Because you know, as a convert, I always think, how can I live the best way Islamically? So mm -hmm. I always look at the society around me and think, how can I make it more Islamic? Mm -hmm. How can I make my high street more Islamic? Mm -hmm. How can I make mm -hmm. the schools more Islamic? How can I make a park more Islamic? And we should always be working towards betterment, towards excellence. So um, enjoying the good, which is Yeah, and we can never nice. necessarily mm -hmm. reach that because we have finite capacities, but it's moving forward. Because mm. Prophet said himself, whatever you do, you should do excellently. And I do think in some sense the Muslim community has fallen into mediocrity. Mm -hmm. And it's tarnishing our reputation and it's impacting our lives and it's impacting our children. And will we have a Muslim community in the future? What will it look like? At the moment, it looks like it's going to decline, perhaps. Mm -hmm. the faith, like the children in general, the youth are... Mm -hmm. It's an uncomfortable. Less, less interested in faith. It's a very and uncomfortable potentiality yeah. for uh, many to consider. Yeah. That, um, while the birth rate and shahadas and you know yeah. the Muslim community may grow in number, but in terms of the potential, um, some may say, if these type of issues are not addressed, is that there will be more Muslims, but they but their Islam will be more nominal. In yeah. Their lives. Less spirituality, less conviction, and we already have the phenomenon of um, you could say. Double, double standard. Um, we have um, Muslim youth that are playing two different lives. Sure, sure. Yeah. The Clark Kent, you know. Clark Kent syndrome. Yeah, when they're in the mosque, they're behaving one way that's culturally acceptable to their parents. Sure. And you know, on the Friday night, they're going out and they're, they're acting the way that you know Muslims yes. shouldn't necessarily shouldn't act. act. Unfortunately, so. let me just bring in. Um, Say that with Talib for a second to just see. Do you share in Sister Anna's perception of the why, or, or would you like to add on, or do you come from another perspective? Uh, no, that's uh, actually we need we need to basically review why it means be, people are coming from different background in this country. We have a different different uh, back people from different background group like South Asian, Middle Eastern, Iranian, or Far Eastern people. Mm -hmm. uh, we are living at one place here, and uh, as uh, uh, I mentioned before as well, that uh, uh, the life in this country is different from the life which they have spent in their own country. Yeah. Uh, they are very busy. New generation, obviously, they are having children, they are growing up, there are new requirements, new needs. They have to look means after their faith as well. and. Uh, there should be some organization, some uh, obviously organization which can look after all these requirements. Yeah. That is very important. Any uh, organization which is suppose this one I am CD is working for Muslims for prophetic vision of Muslim society in, in England. It's an excellent idea. There is no doubt in it. Uh, we are from different background. We need we need somebody to guide us towards a towards an objective, to an Islamic proper objective. Mm -hmm. the, we, we need uh, a vision in which we can rely upon our children, that they are getting the proper education, proper guideline, mm -hmm. proper obviously l being looked after properly. And uh, mm, that's, that's, that's my your, your view, okay, all right. Let me let me tax you a little bit more then, because I'm, knowing that you're um, an expert in language or you know Persian language and Urdu language with your masters, one of the things that comes to mind is in terms of the challenges that the Muslim community, stroke communities in Britain, um, has is I say the language barrier, and I don't mean that because people don't speak English, uh, because most you know probably most Muslims do, but the nuances or the differences in perspective based on speaking a different language. I think we were talking earlier, you said, for example, the language that you, you communicate in sometimes limits you or you think in that paradigm. So, I mean, is it something to 
make the more traditional Muslim uh, languages more relevant, for example, not just Arabic, essentially Arabic, but so we have more of a, a vision of the, the prophetic vision and more of a concept. How important uh, is No, that? no, it's not essential. I don't think so. Okay. I don't th think so because uh, we all are at, at the end of the day, we have to polarize towards one language and that's English. Uh, the problem is that uh, the amount of work which has been done on Islamic history or Islamic laws or, or jurisprudence in English, English language is very, very less. There are lots of work needs to be done in, in English language. In terms of translating when you say in, work? In terms of translating, okay. yeah. All right. Because uh, obviously there are books available in Arabic, Persian. Persian has done a lot of work of mm -hmm. translation and all those things for yeah. the last of, or almost uh, after the Safavite period, 1700, they have been working on lots time. and lots That's of a yeah, long, long time. Yes, yes. Uh, almost about 90% of the work has been translated into Persian. But, uh, and Urdu also is a, it's a language which has been working, translation sure, work, sure. providing Islamic materials. Uh, whether it is Ahlit Sunnah or Tashayu, it doesn't make any difference. But mm -hmm. the It's available. Yeah, it is available yeah, in Urdu yeah. language. But in English language, when you see it's only about 10% work or 5% work has been done, not more than that. Because mm -hmm. if we leave our new generation in the hand of, suppose, English language, that they will find out, they will research, they will explore the materials, that is not available. Mm -hmm. It says we are going through a transitional period in this country because, as I said to you, the history of migration, basically the huge migration started for the last 50 years in this country. Those who had come to this country 50 years before, uh, they are very old. Or uh, the new generation who are born and brought up, they don't know English, they, uh, sorry, they don't know Urdu or they are mm -hmm. Persian or mm -hmm. Arabic. Mm -hmm. and th they, if they know... Their mother tongue is uh, limited, you're saying. Their mother tongue is limited. If they know English, they don't have materials available in English language. Mm -hmm. So, uh, actually, uh, this gap has to be filled in because our new generation is going through a transitional period mm -hmm. and in which this new generation is not getting any means obviously neither they can study on their own nor the Islamic universities are available to provide them education mm -hmm. nor the materials are available on internet or websites are available. It's a shame in the information it's, it's, it's age. Information with, with the very, it's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. So, uh, we are working like uh, one of these means I, I um, uh, went to the last conference and IMCD they have been working and it's a uh, it's a very good uh, initiative mm -hmm. it's a very good initiative at least there will be a hope for 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 these kind of people this generation mm -hmm. that uh, they can consent to this organization organization is an, it's a very it seems to be its initial stage but it, it has a very good planning for the mm -hmm. future mm -hmm. they can provide a very good guideline for the future and they can show the basically path for the new generation okay. which direction they have to go just want to backtrack a little tax you a little bit more both of you actually um because i, I think of language so Im as such an important thing yeah um I was just interested in finding out your perspective on why there has been a gap in the lack of language being translated because it could be just that it um, just hasn't been done yet. It hasn't, the, the need hasn't been particularly identified. Or I'm wondering, uh, has there been a resistance, maybe because of the colonial past and, and, and a resistance to put in <laughs> Islamic material? You know, is there, is there something in the Muslim psyche from many, many people that come from Muslim nations? I'm interested I'm in both of your perspectives. I just want to make one a quick point. I think Sage wants to talk. But um, I think there was a fatwa a long time ago, <laughs> it's haram to learn English <laughs> okay, <laughs> in okay. the past, but that's just yeah, a but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was during during the Sir Sayyid Ahmad movement in, in India when he was he wanted to establish a university which is now Aligarh Muslim University. There were lots of fatwas against him. Okay. That uh, what were his? But fat, fat was yeah. aside, because we stay yeah, away from the controversy. Yeah. If I, if so I, if no, I but I'm saying yeah. that. Uh, yeah. But is there something in the Muslim psyche? Do you yeah. think that's been resistant in the older generation? But now, the f unfortunate few. No, it, is, is, is there is there is no prejudice or bias towards learning. Or obviously they are learning. They are born and brought up here, new generation. Right. But the thing is that if they are born in Iran, they have. They have environment surrounding him, which is totally means uh, pro-Islamic or pro, you know, 
prophetic environment yes, yes in yes. which they don't need to go through the school or there are lots of things they learn in the society yeah but in this society it's this part is of the culture yeah. islam is part of the culture uh look jesus is prophet mm -hmm. we the the basically the uh, you can see the manifestations of his life and this society mm -hmm. there are lots of things we learn those values from this society yes, yes there is yes, no yes. doubt yeah, in yeah, it yeah, yeah. Judea, there, are, there are lots society, of yeah. there are lots of and lots of good things we learn from this society mm -hmm. directly but uh, as far as the learning the islamic values is concerned uh, this this society or this government is not bound to provide that through schools yeah. or or the colleges or in their curriculums we need and we don't have any system uh, basically um, placed and the society that the new generation can get those informations from where, where they will get it from mm -hmm. the thing is that uh, basically that's why i said that this this uh, new generation is going through a very transitional it's a very confused transitional transitional period and mm -hmm. it's a very confused period for the new generation i don't know if you just study those who are 16 17 or 20 years old after 40 years how they will up bring their children what yeah. they will tell yeah, 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 yeah. they don't yeah, know, they don't know who is noah they they will certainly know the version of noah from 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 the book local book school books mm -hmm. but uh, what are the details which which is required for a muslim society for a muslim to know there are lots of detail his, his, history yes, about yes. noah mm -hmm. or like uh, uh, john the baptist has it here yeah you, you you don't know they don't know there are lots of people that don't know what's the relation between John the Baptist and has it here and there are lots of things which they will be not aware because their parents they himself they don't know and the migration which had been done 50 years before they were they were in service they were brought up or educated in a very traditional madrasa system mm -hmm. where when they migrated here they couldn't be able to take the responsibility of those children who were means who were going to the school local school in britain okay. when they used to come back home they used to question their parents there are lots of children they just left their home because of that because their parents they were not able to give the answer logical answer sure, to their children sure sure okay let me just for a second bring in sister anna an interesting <coughs> in fact yeah. fascinating to get your insight on is it possible resistance or your perspective on just um, the the uh, language um, well i have to say uh, as a convert it's come into this tradition and come into the the muslim community and observe and analyze to some extent the religious institutions i am quite surprised that there hasn't been a translation movement you could say mm. um mm. translating arabic and persian texts into english because you know the the eastern countries they have universities they have plenty of english speakers whether it's iran or it's pakistan they have many graduates who speak english and mm -hmm. there's definitely the the capacity there to translate the hadith you know at least the classic books i mean i'm studying at an institute called oh an institute in in the uk there's yeah. a hosa yeah. um and uh, they are teaching us the classical seminary texts because there is a de there is a demand to learn them here student other young people like myself are curious about what are the traditional islamic sciences or wh what are the ulama being taught um mm -hmm. and it, it but ultimately you know what is the truth because i came into this religion and search for truth like many converts do mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and we are learning texts which are still in arabic and these are like quite low level seminary text and not some obscure book that you learn when you yeah. you you and I seven years in or nine years in a way in the seminary for 30 years yeah. you know and it's like some tiny little discussion these are just the really like the bread and butter basic textbooks and i think we need to move to a situation where all these kind of texts are translated and it's not a case of it's going to de-incentivize the students to learn arabic because you anyone with any sense and the teacher should guide us they will realize that you have to learn arabic if mm. you want to succeed ultimately yeah in yeah, this yeah. path of yeah. islamic studies and visioning because there's that huge body of literature from the last 1400 years in arabic and then you've got persian and urdu and so on and you need to be able to utilize that mm -hmm. because there's so much to work with but i do think we need to move to new educational institutions that have an integrated system that actually is bespoke for british students that starts from looks at what is the british student what position they're coming from what skills do they have 
and what endpoint we want to get them to. And we realize they need to learn Arabic along the way, and they probably need to learn Persian, Urdu, and along the way. But how can we help them to? So you're talking about English as a starting point, as a starting point. Actual, yeah, get to, and this is what the institution I've done, they do teach in English as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but things like Hadith, is so obvious. And for example, I've heard, I had one you know, Sunni convert sister to Shiism once asked in a mosque, you know, why isn't all the, these Hadiths um, translated? And they weren't given a very good answer, but... Um, they, there are there are bodies of translation like you know some of the American universities have like for example translated like you know the Sunni Hadith collections like Sahih Bukhari and Muslim, mm-hmm. but it's only academics that know about these things. There's actually a huge amount of academic work that the lay people have no idea exists, and it exists mm-hmm. on these obscure like websites that you only find if you're already an academic, and I think it's a shame. Um, so, but then there's another factor like the brother was saying. Um, or it inspired me, that you need homegrown scholars to some extent. I mean, exactly. you can't just rely on Iranian students that speak English to translate things and to help us move forward because they don't know the culture here. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. they can translate, but they will, whatever they translate and they interpret will be through their own experience. And this is a fundamental problem of Islamic studies, that we are not in 7th century Arabia anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and in some sense, we can never get back to that point. We can never perhaps understand the revelation as the people then understood it and know the prophet mm-hmm, mm-hmm, as mm-hmm. the people then Those knew him. Those who sat with him. But it doesn't mean we can't access, I believe personally, it doesn't mean we can't access truth. It doesn't, um, but every generation has this problem. You know, you have the formative period, um, first few centuries after the revelation, and that was when a lot of this and all the other disciplines were being put together. They were evolving, yeah. And yeah. they weren't 7th century um, Arabians. They would have been 8th you know, or 9th century. Their culture yeah. had changed massively. Yeah, They'd yeah. moved into cities. 200 years is a long time. Yeah, they mm-hmm. changed. You know, the Muslim empire had spread hugely. They'd become, you know, the, instead of it being revelation for Bedouins and a small agricultural community, they were in large cities and much more like civilization. So... It has to be a homegrown effort in coordination with the East. Mm -hmm. And so we need to bring our people here up to speed with what has already been done, but then work together to move forward in a a British direction. Inshallah, it's still a a possibility. Say, you look like you wanted to jump in and add something. This is is our immigration history is very, very new and very short here. Mm -hmm. It's not very long. Mm -hmm. Uh, Translation with the amount of work which is needed to transl- means needed to be translated in English yeah. for means for the whole community to suffice the need is is it will take another seventy, eighty years, I'm telling you very to get to yeah. get up to scratch to, you yeah. feel like. There are there are the books of a hadith, mm-hmm. whether it is I'm talking about both both brother and the Sanun and brother and Shia mm-hmm. and both community. Mm-hmm. The work it will take another 70 years to translate then th- if they are not going to start it from now mm-hmm. yeah. they are not going to reach to that point and islamic society uh, look if you want to follow islam if you want to be a muslim and stick to your religion and faith you need to translate these books otherwise you will be lost yeah. in the society yeah. 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 you will be and lost in the society uh, I d- i'm just telling you because the if a Muslim society, if the Muslim world aspires uh, that their Muslims are going to the West, they are settling there, they need to be provided these kind of facilities as and well. Because, uh, you know, if you, if you see the local society, means they are local Christians, they are getting proper education in their theology. Yes. They are very, very, you know, no, there are some noted, uh, notable means, uh, scholars I have seen. Mm-hmm. They, are, means they are very, very literate. They are very educated in their religion. And to that level, if you want to reach, it will take, will take another 70 mm-hmm. years. I was going to say that, and also thinking of it from the perspective of promoting not just to solidify the Muslim community, but also to promote the Islamic values in a society where there are going to be large amounts of uh, a large amount of individuals who that, are that interested and looking for a, mm. a path or looking for guidance, or with the way that the story or the narrative of Islam is being told in the mainstream press or misrepresented in mainstream mm. press, it's even more important to have 
literature, classical, yeah, exactly, yeah. Muslim literature. If you were talking about yeah. so the general public Absolutely. in yeah. Britain, you should be able to say. They ask you a question about what happened at this time in history, or what what is your theology. Better, you should be able to get the book off the shelf in yeah. English and present it to them, yeah. and there should be a commentary. Yeah. Because some people but, have some people have um, reason to question, and it's antagonistic. And some people yeah. have sincere questions, but regardless of their intention, yeah. if it's available, it, it can uh, it can address this issue. We're gonna like stop for a we're gonna stop for yeah. a short a short break, mm -hmm. and we're gonna jump back on the other side. Inshallah. Uh, to continue this very interesting conversation. Uh, thank you for staying with us for the duration and we hope to see you on the other side. Asalaamu Alaikum.